Hey everyone, welcome again to another City of God video, this time take seven. So last time we talked about the image of the mountain city. It's this image that God is to be met on this high and holy sanctuary, that when we are in his presence, it's a place separated from both really the mundane of life and the corrupting influences of this world. So both, both the normal things, because this is something that's special, and the things that are truly sinful. It also speaks to God's sovereign rule over the world. He is he's high and lifted up, like on a throne. And when we meet God on this high place, we are arriving at a place where we will live with him in harmony. So now we will look at part two of this imagery. The most important section of the Old Testament text is that section which tells the tale of the exodus of the Hebrews from Egypt. Uh, along with the giving of the law at Mount Sinai. It's the picture of salvation in the Old Testament. God rescues his people from the forces of evil, those, those gods, those powers, oppressive powers of the Egyptians, as well as the Pharaoh himself, who was seen as a god. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, oh baby, let my people go on. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he delivers them from bondage, and he forms a new covenant with them. And they, that basically the covenant saying that they will be his people and he will be their God. It's the idea of this special word in the Old Testament called hesed, uh, which means loyal love or faithful devotion. Uh, and of course, God is showing hesed, but he's calling his people to return hesed to him. That's this reciprocating idea within the covenant, even though God is the one who's making it all happen. It's from this event at Mount Sinai that we get the imagery of the holy mountain city. It was on a mountain that God met with his people's representative, Moses, who is kind of acting as a new kind of Adam. And he begins the establishment of this new people of God. You them in and plant them on your own mountain, the place, O Lord, which you have made for your abode, the sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established. Well, the instructions that God gives at Mount Sinai has a lot to do with holiness. That's a key idea in this whole section. And the idea to be, it, holiness is this idea to be set apart from the way the rest of the world works. But more importantly, to also be set apart for God. This implies something really, really important, that how God works is different from the world, hence the need to be set apart. So just going along to the beat of the world is exactly what God doesn't want. Secondly, you're not just to be separated from the world, but you're to act in the world according to God's design for you you are set apart for God. You are a special representative of God's values in the world, representatives of righteousness. The people of God have to learn how to live in God's presence, as opposed to what they had been doing, and that's living in the world. So he gives them his law to begin teaching them or uh, orienting them to this way of thinking in life. And it goes without saying that they had struggle. People need to be kind of reprogrammed or reoriented to living with God again, like they were in the garden, uh, like we see in Romans chapter 12, those famous verses that we already, that we always kind of quote, that we're to be not conformed to this world, but to be conformed to this thinking that follows after God, to transform our minds, to sanctify ourselves. Um, we're to be thinking and acting and living in a way that's unlike living in the world. 
We can see that a momentary redemption in this story of the Exodus is, is not enough. So no, we're not talking about work salvation here, but we are saying that a sanctified life is kind of a natural progression of redemption. To turn to God can't just mean a momentary promise or decision, but a commitment of loyalty, hesed. How strange would it be to get married, say your vows, and then the next day inform your beloved you are headed out to continue life as if nothing had ever happened. I mean, sure, you'll, you'll check in now and again, but nothing has really changed. It's not like you just made a monumental deci life decision or anything, right? This is kind of how it would be like, or is, when we say, I'm committing to God, I'm a follower of Jesus, I'm following after him, and then immediately leave to act in a way that you've always acted before within the ways of the world. Uh, and so this is what God's calling them out of, to be set apart to himself, uh, right? To start to reorient how it means to live with God. So God warns the people, uh, hey, don't come up to the mountain. When they come out of the Exodus and get to Mount Sinai, he says, don't come out, uh, don't come up rather to the mountain. You're not ready yet. You've not been reoriented to the sanctified life. You're not a holy people. Uh, you need to know what it means to live with me. So send up Moses as your representative. The mountain and its heights represented separation of the people from God. God is high and lifted up. The people are still here within the world. Uh, and this is how they would have to operate for the moment because of sin. So God gives instructions for the building of the tabernacle as a kind of portable high and lifted up mountain city sanctuary, right? It's a place um, where there would be layers of separation, but still allow the people to worship God and come into his presence in a way with, with mediators that are the priests. Not everyone could attain access just yet. They would have to learn how to become God's people, to be holy, to be sanctified. Well, ultimately, this portable dwelling of God would be taken to the promised land and a permanent temple would be built in Jerusalem, the city of Zion. Now, the, the city of Zion, Jerusalem, becomes the new holy mountain, the new high and lifted up sanctuary where God comes to dwell with the people. Well, in application, let's talk about two things, really. And most of the time, I want to spend talking about holiness. Uh, it's such an important concept in the scriptures, and it's one that, really, to be honest, we're kind of alien to. Um, we understand holiness to a degree. Uh, we understand it more in practical ways. We're supposed to be good. We're supposed to keep away from sinful things. Um, really, holiness is at the heart of the Bible and its teaching. It's really at the heart of what the gospel is. Holiness is the opposite of what happened at the fall of Adam and Eve. When they chose to rebel, they said they're breaking covenant with God, that they're going to do things their way, that they are separating from God and separating unto themselves to make their own world. Uh, and so they did. And this is that spirit of Babylon building their own city and, and spirit of Antichrist, anti-God separating from God, not to God. So God's act of redeeming and sanctifying his people is his attempt to undo the act of rebellion, to reclaim us for his own. And when we follow through with this, we re-engage the promise. It would be like that, that foolish husband that we talked about above, who, who gets married and then acts like nothing's changed. And suddenly he wakes up to reality. He has desperately wronged his beloved. He turns back to her, repents of his wrongdoing, and asks to renew the covenant commitment. And in an act of grace and forgiveness, his beloved receives him again, a little wiser and perhaps with some baggage, but also a firm commitment to follow through despite mistakes. This is us. We join in covenant with God, separated unto him. God has showed us hesed. He showed us this loyal love, and now we are to respond with Hesed towards him. 
that that is that that sanctified life that even as he is our God we will be his people we won't do it perfectly of course but we're trying to live out that covenant promise separating our life unto him because why we we've, we've been redeemed we've been bought with a price our life is not our own we're his precious possession his royal priesthood his unique and holy people not because we're really that good or holy but we're holy because we've been separated by him been made special by him so if the first point is that we are to live in holiness as in we're to live up to that the status the specialness that god has given us by by redeeming us and separating us unto himself as his special possession if we're to, to live up to that standard of holiness as the first lesson the second one is righteousness so there's holiness and then there's righteousness well what what's the difference um, well really they're they're kind of it's kind of the other side of the same holiness coin so to speak uh, we're not just separating from the world unto god uh, which is holiness but we're also standing for what is right in this world we're drawing lines in the sand against what is wrong in this world the righteousness side means we can't we can't always be quiet, which means our setting apart might get us into trouble sometimes. Um, this might, might, this has to be done with humility though. Um, it's not as people believing themselves to be better than others, but being people who know that they've messed up, remember that analogy of the husband up there, they know they've messed up and they were shown grace and forgiveness when they realized it. And now realizing what they did wrong, they're going into that world and they're, they're declaring both what is holy and also what is right and saying, this is what needs to be done. Uh, it's not enough to simply say, this is how I'm going to live, but it's to go into the world and it's to declare God's righteousness in the world to also, because everyone is to submit under God. Uh, and I know that very much goes against the, the grain, the flow of um, many of the things in our modern world. Um, but it's what the Bible calls us to, to live righteously, but with humility. Uh, and so if we can apply those two things, holiness and righteousness, we'll begin, like the Israelites, to learn to be in God's presence, to live with him, on that high and holy mountain as his separated people. All right, we will catch you guys next week on our next video.